Hello all, today we will be talking about how and why you should be using the construction script inside your blueprints in Unreal Engine 5. Let's jump in. In your content drawer, we will, to, we will create two assets. Right click, new blueprint class, of type actor. We will call this BP underscore construction demo. Right click again, create a new material, call this M underscore simple color demo. I will double click into my material. I will press and hold the number three and left click to create a constant three vector, or you can type constant three vector and select this option. I like to use the hotkey. I can now right click on this and say convert to parameter. I will call this color and I will drag this top node, the gray one, into my base color. This, by setting this as a parameter, we can control it easily from a material instance or from blueprint. I will save and I will exit out. Now let's jump into our blueprint. I'll open up and first let's review the three main tabs that pop up when you open a new blueprint. We have the viewport which is where you will see any objects that have a sort of 3D representation or a visual representation in the environment. So if I add a static mesh, or I'll add a cube, we can see that it pops up here. The construction script is where we will be performing our logic today. The construction script is used primarily to set values to an actor, so to this blueprint, uh, on its initialization within the environment. So as soon as a, an actor pops into the environment, what happens in the construction script will be applied basically the split second it begins to exist. It's similar to event begin play in the event graph, but event begin play only happens at game time and not on an initialization when we drag an actor into a level. Let's do one more thing and then we will add our logic to our actor. So in the components, I will add an arrow component and I will drag it onto my cube and I'm going to move it out a little bit in my viewport so we can see some sort of forward vector to our object. I'll compile and I'll save. Now in our construction graph we will add logic to create a dynamic material instance for our, our component. We will set the world rotation of the object to give it a unique and random rotation and then we will set a static mesh from an array of available meshes. So off of the execution pin on my construction script node, I will say create dynamic material instance. I'm going to use our simple color that we created before. So I'll use the gray arrow to add it here. I'm going to pull off my cube from my components list, just so I have it for in a second off of my dynamic material instance here, I will say set vector parameter value. And if you recall before in our material, we called this vector parameter color. So I will call this color. I will drag off here and I will promote this to a local variable called color. I will click this little eyeball, which is not visible now, but once I select it, it will be visible to be instance editable on this blueprint once I add it to my environment. And I will compile this and I'll set my default color to red and set one as the alpha value here. This doesn't matter because my material is opaque, so this will not be reflected. I just like to have this as one. And now let's take our cube and we will say set material. drag this into here, drag this return value from our material into here. And now this will set the material. So this will create the dynamic material, set the color value, and then set the material on our component up here. So I will type C to put a comment around this. I will call this set material. Awesome. So in our viewport here, you can see now that this has created a dynamic material instance. If we change this color, we're going to see it change dynamically in our viewport. 
So now let's go back to our construction script and we're going to add our rotation. I'm going to grab my cube, drag it off here. I will say set world rotation, drag this execution pin here, give myself some room over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it only set the Z. So it's going to rotate around its Z axis. So I'm going to say get world rotation. I'm going to pull off here and say make rotator. Use this option here. I'm going to pull off of this world rotation and I'll say break rotator. This will allow me to isolate my X, my Y, and my Z. So I'll maintain these two values. I will pull off Z and say random float in range which will allow me to, on construct, pick a random value for this float between the zero and 360 degrees, which is set here and here with my min and max. And this will set my value. So I'm gonna comment this with C and say set rotation, just so it's organized. And then we'll pull off here. We will say, I'm gonna get my, my cube first actually. I will say set static mesh. I'm gonna drag into here. I'll pull off where it says new mesh and say uh, random array item. I'll pull off this and say promote to variable. And I'll call this mesh array in the bottom left over here. And once I compile, I'll be able to set my available meshes on the right here under default value. So I'll press the plus sign three times and I know I'm going to use my cone, cube, and cylinder. So I'm just gonna use this prefix shape underscore to get these values and I'm gonna select them with the left click. And my cylinder, so I've set all three of these values. So the mesh can only be one of these three values. I'll comment this out and say set mesh. And let's go test in our viewport. So I will minimize this and I'm going to drag our actor into our level. So if I drop this out, you'll see that it is going to construct. It will set a random rotation for the object. And if I press G, I'll be able to see, so G will hide and set the game, game view mode, which will enable certain things, you know, so for instance, the arrow is hidden in game. So if I press G, you know, now I will see only things that are available and, and shown in game view. So as I drag, drag this, I'll see it will set and apply a random rotation to my mesh. It is also selecting randomly from the available objects. And I can select these and change the color here to apply unique material instances based on the colors that I'm selecting. So I want to make one more point. If you noticed, when I drag on every tick of movement, it will construct and execute the logic on our construction script. Sometimes we don't want this because these construction operations can be very heavy if it's computing a lot of different things. So let's jump back into our blueprint for a second. And if we go into our class settings, we can see under blueprint options, it says run construction script on drag. If we untick this and compile, we'll see that when we drag our blueprint, it's not actually going to construct until the very last instance. And it's going to, when we release, set those random values instead of doing it within every sort of tick of movement. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. The construction script is an important thing to have an understanding of as you're building out your blueprints for your games in Unreal Engine 5. And if you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe and stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials. Thanks all.